Hello and welcome to today's screencast in which I'll explain to you how to get started with contributing to the NEOS content application platform and the Flow framework. My name is Bastian Heist. I work for Sandstorm and you can reach me on Twitter via Beheist or on the NEOS Slack under Bastian Heist. First of all, let's have a look at the repository structure of NEOS and Flow. You can find all the repositories relevant to NEOS and Flow under httpsgithub.com slash NEOS. When we have a look at this link, then you'll see that there are six pinned repositories. And these six pinned repositories play the main role in how the repository structure of NEOS and Flow works and how you contribute to NEOS. Let's have a look. There is the NEOS based distribution, the NEOS development distribution, the NEOS development collection, and the same for Flow, a base distribution, a development distribution, and a development collection. So these six repositories are the ones you use mainly when you work with NEOS and Flow. We'll have a look at what they do now individually and what they are for. The base distributions of NEOS and Flow are the basis for starting new production projects based on NEOS or Flow. So these two are not for contributing, these two are for starting actual projects. And they are the ones you will clone when you want to work with NEOS, when you want to start an actual project. Let's have a look at the NEOS base distribution on GitHub. And you can see that there's actually not too much in there. It's just a build folder and a composer JSON. Look at the, looking at the composer JSON, you'll see that the NEOS base distribution requires everything you need to work with NEOS. It requires NEOS itself, the node types package, the demo package, sidekick starter, and so on. When you clone this repository and work with it, feel free to remove stuff from here. For example, usually, when you do a production project based on NEOS, the first thing you will want to remove is the demo package, as you usually won't need it for a production project. The next two important repositories are the development distributions. These are the ones we'll install when we want to contribute to NEOS and Flow. They are not the repositories we contribute to, Quite similar to what the base distribution does, there's not much in these repositories except the composer manifest. They are used to install a working development environment, to install working versions of NEOS or Flow uh, in order to have something that's runnable to contribute. Again, let's have a look at what the NEOS development distribution looks like. By the way, I'm only talking about the NEOS distributions here, but the same, of course, applies to the Flow development distributions, and so on. So it's again just a composer JSON. When we have a look at it, we'll see that it requires the NEOS development collection and the Flow development collection in the dev versions, which means we'll always get the latest development versions. And also most of the other packages that are required by NEOS are installed in the dev version. So this basically installs the latest stuff that is available for NEOS and Flow. The development collections, which get installed by the development distributions, contain the actual Neo CMS and Flow framework packages, which we want to contribute to, right? So looking at these repositories, we'll see that there's a whole lot of code in there. There's Neos itself, the node types package, the Kickstarter, the, the media package, and so on. And this is where the actual code lies. And this is, in fact, where we want to contribute to. The development distributions are used to install these packages because, as you can see, um, there's of course we need the the Flow CLI and we need other stuff to make to make Flow work. And this is what the development distributions are for. Now, how do we get set up in order to work with these development distributions? 
The first thing we want to do is clone the actual distribution. So now let's execute this on the command line. And we'll get a working clone of our NEOS development distribution. Of course, there's not too much in there. The next thing we need to do is to run composer install in order to get all the dependencies installed. This might take a little while. However, I've done it before, of course. So much of this stuff might be cached. And I'm too lazy to disable xdebug. That's why it takes a minute or so. Otherwise, it would be much faster. Now, while this is installing, the next step would be, and we can already execute that, to create our own fork of the NEOS development collection, because that is the repository, repository we later want to push to. Let's go here. And if I click on fork here, we can see that I already have a fork if you haven't worked on or haven't contributed to the NEOS development collection before, you'll likely not have one yet. I have one already, so I'll just go here. This is what we need. And while I was saying this, quite a lot of the packages which we need have been installed. Perfect, it's done. So what's the next step? We need to connect our fork and our upstream. And by upstream, I mean the NEOS development collection, which is contained in the NEOS organization. Right? We need to make sure that we can work with both these repositories uh, in order to not, not have to do all these steps, which I just showed each time we want to contribute. So what we need to do is, first of all, we go to packages application NEOS. Maybe to illustrate a little bit what has happened here. When I do git remote minus verbose here, we can see that the origin which I've received is of course the NEOS development distribution. Now, if I go to packages, packages application, and it's not only NEOS, it's NEOS dot, NEOS, NEOS dot, I'm wrong, of course, it's not packages application, that's where all the dependencies go. It's packages neos, neos dot neos. Right, this is where the actual neos code is, so let's just fix that. There we go. And if I do git remote minus verbose here, we can see that I have different repositories, and that is because I am in the NEOS in the NEOS folder, we have our own Git repository, right? So this is what actually points to the NEOS development collection. Now, in order to not push to the actual development collection in the NEOS organization, but to our own fork to be able to create a pull request later, we first of all need to rename the origin to upstream. That's not strictly, strictly necessary. Some people uh, like to leave it as origin. I prefer to always push, push to origin and just call the upstream repository upstream. So if I do git remote minus v now, we can see that this has, re has been renamed to upstream. And then the next thing I wanna do is to add my own fork. Of course, you would put your own fork here and then I have my actual fork. Now, when you work with your own fork locally, before you contribute, make sure to pull down all the latest changes. If you've contributed to open source before, then this is probably not news to you. But uh, since NEOS was the first open source project I contributed, contributed to, I needed to learn this first. So we fetch the upstream, of course, right now that doesn't make much sense because I've cloned it before. And I can git merge upstream master into my master and it'll say I'm already up to date. If I'm not up to date, if something has happened on master, um, as it's likely to be, 
because bug fixes get pushed to master all the time, then it'll fast forward my local master to where the upstream master is. And now I can push my local changes to my own fork. That's important to keep my own fork in sync because as you can see here, my own fork, I've not done, done much um, in the last few days. So it's quite a bit behind the upstream master. Whoops, and there my recording went away. As I was showing you just now, I tried to push my local fork to my uh, my local clone of the upstream repository to my remote fork on GitHub. And just by doing git push, push, of course, it didn't work because git still had the tracking branch set to the upstream repositories master branch. Of course, I'm not allowed to push to NEOS, NEOS development collection. So in order to do it right, I need to do git push origin and then it pushes to my own fork, which will work. Of course, you can set the tracking branch to the origin to your own forks um, master. And then the next time you can just do a git push. So the result of this git push is that my fork is now even with NEOS master. Now, let's assume I want to add a new feature um, and therefore I'm working on master. And let's just assume for the sake of this video that my change, my grand new feature is to make these headlines here uppercase. Then I'll have a little change. I do git add dot get commit. Oh, sorry, I forgot something very important. Before I commit, of course, I should go to my own branch. I don't uh, strictly have to. I can work on my own master, of course, but um, it's more practical because when you have several bug fixes or several features that you're working on at the same time, then it's very useful, of course, to have multiple branches. So I'll just do git checkout minus b. Um, my great headline change feature. Very nice branch name. And on that branch, I can do git commit minus m task changed the headline or whatever. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll do git push and I will say you have no tracking branch set. So we'll just copy that. I'm always too, too lazy to type it all. So now I've pushed my change to my own fork as done here. Oh, and something else, of course, when you do uh, actual changes on NEOS, then before you commit them, you should make sure that the tests are still running. And I have a nice little tool called fUnit test, which you can install. That'll no matter where in my um, NEOS, in my NEOS uh, folder structure I am, it'll know that um, flow is somewhere up my path and it'll find it and execute the tests. And we can see that the tests are all still passing. If you don't have the fUnit test tool, it's open source, by the way, it's maintained by Sandstorm. Um, you need to go to the root folder of your distribution and run bin php unit, unit minus c build build essentials php unit unit tests xml and it'll yield the same result. I'll skip that as we see the tests have passed. Now notice here I'm on master again because I'm in the development distribution again. I need to go back to packages neos neos dot neos and push that great feature I just did to my own branch. Ah, oh, I did that before already. Now GitHub is smart and already knows that I've pushed something and now I can on GitHub create a pull request to the original neos master. And this is the next thing I'd like to point you toward. Uh, I'd like to point you towards. Um, there are a few contributing guidelines and things you should know before you contribute to NEOS. So let's have a look at those. I could now create this pull request, but obviously it doesn't make any sense. So we'll skip that and have a look at the NEOS contribution guidelines instead. Um, there are two things you should absolutely know before you contribute to NEOS. The first is which branch to contribute to. Now, 
there's on the NEOS homepage under download and extend release roadmap and process, you'll find the release process and the release roadmap and it describes everything you need to know about how often NEOS is released, how the release works and which branch you should push to. And in our case, the latest supported branch, it's in that dark blue here, um, is the 2.21. As it says here, bug fixes from April 1st, 2016 to April 1st, 2017. And today it's the 15th of March, 2017. 2.2 is still officially supported. So if I had done a bug fix before, I would have needed to do that on 2.2. In order to do that, you instead of branching off master, you would branch off your um, you would branch off the 2.2 branch of the upstream repository and then you could push to that again. So but uh, instead I worked on NEOS 3.0, which is the current master, uh, which is where I'm sorry, the current master is will of course become NEOS 3.1. So my feature, um, if it was accepted, would go into NEOS 3.1. And again, here it's described uh, what, what kind of changes you should make, what kind of changes are considered breaking um, the release cycle and so on. So this is worth a read before you start contributing. And the second thing you should know is um, to adhere to the commit message style. That's also, um, that, that link was also given in the GitHub um, text box that was shown to me when I wanted to um, to create my pull request. So here's the commit message style and basically make sure you read that and adhere to it. Nobody will uh, will shoot you, of course, if you uh, don't adhere to it, but um, you should to make everyone's life easier. Right, that concludes my presentation. So I hope that was helpful for you and I hope it'll make your life easier and everyone uh, will be happy when more people start contributing to NEOS. So have fun doing it. Um, my name is Bastian Heist. Feel free to contact me about uh, this video or whatever you'd like to know. And have a good day.